Welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to discuss role based authentication with Spring Security. If you are new to this channel and if you are watching my video for the first time, I would highly recommend that you check out the entire playlist. The link for the entire playlist can be found in the description of this video. And it's a playlist about Spring Security where we cover Spring Security right from scratch, from very basics till the very advanced features such as GWT. So talking about this video, in this video, we are going to cover role based authentication. Are you excited? Immediately hit the like button and uh, show some love people, show some support over here. Also, if you are new to this channel and if you are liking my work, if you think uh, that uh, this content is good, then you should immediately subscribe and hit the bell notification icon over there. Okay, uh, this will enable us to stay connected and you would be updated with all the future updates that I'm posting in this series. Okay, so we are talking about role based authentication and uh, it's a very common feature normally, wherein if you're building a production grade application, you will have some parts of your application accessible to certain users and then other parts of the application would be accessible to some other kinds of users and then some parts of the application would be open for all right so that's what role based authentication is for example if you're building an e-commerce website you might have an administrator or an admin who would be allowed to perform operations such as delete create products he would be allowed to change the price of any particular product item or something like that run discounts and uh, any normal user who is not an administrator he can only like view the product information he can probably do some other reading stuff he cannot modify uh, something which he is not allowed to okay so that's what role based authentication is so once the user is authenticated okay you need to essentially assess as to what he is allowed to do and on the basis of that whatever he's trying to do you grant him access to that action okay so that is what role based authentication is all about and we are going to learn exactly how you can do that in your spring boot application so it's going to be very exciting we are going to cover some new annotations and in the process we are going to learn a lot i'm so excited as to and i'm so happy as well as to how far we have come with this entire playlist okay we started from the very basics very basics like how to add spring security into our application and right now we are talking about role based authentication and i'm going to make it really a cake walk for you okay and if you have not liked like the video okay if you have not liked after hearing this like what we are going to cover you should absolutely like and even subscribe okay because i normally see uh, the analytics over here the analytics dashboard most of my viewers, like majority of the views I get from uh, people who have not subscribed to my channel. I don't know why. And there is a good uh, repeat rate as well. Like people who watch my videos come back again to uh, watch my videos again. So, of course, they are finding value. That's why they are coming back. But uh, yeah, I don't know why people are not subscribing. So you should uh, absolutely hit the subscribe button. Okay, I won't take much time. But one last thing. I would want you all to comment below as well and uh, introduce yourself as to who you are, where you are joining in from, what you do currently and what sort of videos you want to see on this channel. Okay. And uh, I normally check the comments of my viewers to like plan out the next set of videos. Okay. So you have a chance to influence that list people comment. Okay. So I won't take much time without a further ado. Let's jump right in. Right now, how our API is working is we have this endpoint which is secured and anyone in our application, like any user can access this endpoint. So I can access it using this admin credentials from here. I can even access it using the user credentials. So I can say user one and password one. Okay. This is good, but there will be scenarios in your application. Like if you're building a complex production grade application, it's common to have a functionality where you want to control access to different parts of your application based on the roles assigned to the users. For example, you might only want to allow administrators to delete any data or update anything. 
while regular users can only view the data, right? There might be teams in the organization who is using your product and they might want to have a customer support specialist, for example, want to only view the data and they want to hide the phone numbers from the customer support specialist, right? And uh, administrators like the uh, store managers or someone like that, or someone at the admin level can only edit and modify the data, view the phone numbers and all, okay? So you could face this scenario wherein certain APIs are restricted to people with certain roles, okay? And this is often implemented with the help of annotations to make it easy to manage, okay? And Spring makes it really easy. What we are going to do is we are going to add one more API over here, okay? And we are going to talk about how we can get role-based access, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of more APIs over here. Okay, I'm going to say, say hello here. And here you can say user endpoint, something like this. Okay, and this can be slash user here. And I can say hello, and I can say user, something like this. Okay, and then I can even have the admin endpoint. So I can just copy this, come down, and this can be the admin endpoint, right? And this can be admin, something like this, right? And here, instead of user, I can say hello admin. Now, if I run this, everybody is going to be able to access this, okay? So if I say hello, and if I say user, for example, over here, okay? So this is going to work. Admin is also going to work, right? So right now, we are signing in from user credentials, and we are also able to access this admin API, right? But let's say I want to restrict the access level of these APIs to users with certain roles, okay? So I can make use of annotations over here. So first thing, what I need to do is I'll add a annotation here, okay? I'll say pre-authorized here, okay? So by using this annotation, you are telling Spring Security that, hey, I want only users with a specific role to access this particular thing, okay? So what pre-authorize will do is, pre-authorize is used to check authorization before executing a method, okay? And you can specify conditions that need to be true for the method to execute, okay? So for example, here I can specify a condition, I can say has role, and I can say over here, okay, user something like this, okay? So this is the pre-authorized annotation. And for this to work, what I should also do is, I should go to my security config here, and I should enable method security, okay? So if I add this annotation, okay, this thing will start working, all right? So let me run this, all right? So what we are doing is we want only user to access the user endpoint, okay? And if I come over here and if I say admin and here if I say admin pass, he can access the admin API. But if I go to user, let us see if this works. You can see 500 internal server error, okay? Interesting. This is not what we expected. Wait a minute. So if I go over here, now, if you see the error over here, cannot find terminating like code for the string. So here we missed this closing code. Okay, small mistake. But if I rerun the application, okay, this should work as expected. No issues as such. So if I come over here and if I try to access this, you should see 403 forbidden. Okay. Now we are not getting 401 unauthorized over here. Okay. Because if you're logging in with the credentials that are recognized, okay? And uh, those credentials do not include the permission to access a specific resource. The Spring Security will issue a 403 forbidden, okay? This is because authentication is successful. So what this means is the request is authenticated, but accessing this resource is forbidden, okay? So Spring Security understands the request, understands the credentials, but it is not able to give you access to this particular thing, okay? And it says the request was a legal request, but the server is refusing to respond to it, okay? And this is unlike 401, 
because uh, authenticating will make no difference okay so i hope this makes sense and we are not able to or we are not allowed to access this resource but we can access hello over here so this would work as it is okay so you can see how this is getting uh, to work over here okay so here hello is working but we have just blocked the access of to this particular endpoint over here okay and we have blocked it for user okay so here you can update this for admin so let's say only admin can access this and no one else so if you try to log in over here with the help of users you are going to get an error okay so here if i say admin okay and if i say send you'll see this works and if i say user one and password one over here okay so if i say password one and if you say submit you will get 403 forbidden again because this is the admin endpoint okay so this is how you can enable role based access so it's it becomes pretty easy when it comes to spring boot when uh, enabling role based access and this is because of the wonderful annotations that you get access to okay now there is one more annotation in fact that i should talk about which is post authorize so here what happens is if you see this code Pre-authorize is running before executing the method. There is post-authorize, which is used to enforce security after a method has executed. Okay. And that allows you to take decisions based on the result of the method. Okay. So there is post-authorize as well. Okay. But we are using pre-authorize over here because we want to block the execution of this method. And uh, we want to allow this with a specific role only. Okay. And if your question is where we are setting this role, so we are setting this role in security config over here. So if you come over here, you have user, admin, these are the roles that you are setting over here. Okay. So if you switch the roles, the behavior will also be switched. Okay. So this is how you can implement role-based security in your APIs. So I hope this was useful.